America in and of itself was a perfect dream implemented by imperfect men. But the foresight of the Founding Fathers was to understand their innate imperfection and to create a system that was empowered with the mechanics for change. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners, Will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I have a dream. The Electoral College is one of the things that it gives the framework for you to have the power to stand up for your rights and your liberties. You've had it for so long, people don't know what it truly means. The actual structure that we have that has allowed us to get here is not the thing that we should want to take down. A lot's happened over the years. And while this nation has been tested by war, and it's been tested by recession, and all manner of challenges, I stand before you again tonight, after almost two terms as your president, to tell you I am more optimistic about the future of America than ever before. America was designed to protect individual rights. And getting rid of the Electoral College is the simplest way to make sure that we fall short of our potential. People have gotten stuck on the word democracy, but we are a democratic republic designed to cool the passions of society. That is what the Constitution was designed to do, and by extension, that is what the Electoral College is designed to safeguard. That's also why this experiment we call America has been so effective for so long. I remember when I when I first studied uh, American politics and constitutional constitutionalism, the the idea of electoral college is always kind of an outlier. If for no other reason, it's not a college. I mean, you don't actually go there to study. <laughs> um, it doesn't actually exist in the same way. Well, what is this thing? It's it's an odd bird, in 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 the sense of um, it's not an obvious thing. Having said that, it's a quite brilliant creation on, on the part of the founders. After the American Revolution and before the Constitution, you have this period of time where we had a different Constitution called the Articles of Confederation. And this was a really, really simple government. It was basically just a Congress with, with nothing else. And that meant that the states really just did their own thing. The revolution was fought on behalf of self-government in colonial capitals. So if you were from Connecticut, you were fighting the revolution in order to be taxed not from Westminster, but from Hartford. And why was Hartford preferable? Well, because those were people you were electing. Okay, now does that mean that you wanted a government that had input from people who lived in Georgia? No, it did not mean that. In fact, you probably had no conception of people who lived in Georgia. You almost certainly had no contact with people from outside your own region, probably your own state. You'd likely never met anybody who'd been there. You'd never talked to anyone from there. You didn't even know what they sounded like. I mean, we often think that the United States started as a powerful nation. It didn't. It started as 13 feeble states barely knit together by a continental agreement. And all around the states was the British Empire, and then to the west, across the Mississippi River, the Spanish Empire. The European states had not gone away. They were fully as threatening and present as they had been at any other time. And here were these 13 states making themselves weaker and weaker day by day with the way they argued with each other. And then people realize there's essentially no way that their states can vindicate the rights of people who live there unless they're leagued together. So this doesn't mean that you think. 
uh, if you're in New Jersey, that you want New Yorkers to be involved in anything to do with the government you have. But you need to lead with them in fighting this war. But that poses a problem, because a lot of the rhetoric of the revolution is about home rule and not having excessive government, not having government that's not accountable to you and your neighbors. Why would you be fighting a revolution against distant, unaccountable authority and then trying to create a new distant, unaccountable authority? The founders saw that the democracy that was going on within the states was not doing a good job, in some cases, of protecting individual rights. So when they got together to create the Constitution, this was one of the things they knew they had to do. Although at the beginning, they didn't know quite how they were going to do it, but they knew they had to create a government that the power comes from the people, but also a government that couldn't oppress the people. And that was what set them down this road of writing the American Constitution.